I'm gonna share my screen. I wanna thank you all for spending time with us, for coming in and, uh, and just taking a little bit of time to learn a little bit more about the Jacob School of Engineering, about the Idea Engineering Student Center. Um, it, you know, hopefully you learn a few things. Hopefully we're able to kind of demystify a couple of things. Um, we hope you learn something about the Summer Engineering Institute and our, about our Idea Scholars Program. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Ruben D. Rodriguez. Congratulations to all of you out there on being admitted to UC San Diego and the Jacob School of Engineering. Give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Right on. So who's hosting this webinar? We've got a couple of folks. So for the presentation component, it's uh, myself, uh, Ruben D. Rodriguez. I'm a program coordinator. I'm also the Idea Scholars coordinator. Uh, I got my bachelor's at the University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, not that long ago because we're the same age. I'm just kidding, I'm much, much older. I also went and got my master's from Harvard. And then I have a co-host here, which is Jessica. Jessica, you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Ruben. Um, so welcome everyone. I'm Jessica Baldus. I'm our academic success coordinator and I facilitate both our engineering learning communities and our ACES scholars program. So my bachelor's is from the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And then my master's in engineering is from um, University of Washington in Seattle. So both the UWs are my alma maters. And I will be mostly on chat tonight. So um, please, as Ruben's talking and going, feel free to put your questions in chat and I will try to kind of answer them on the fly as we go. Thanks, Ruben. Most definitely. Thank you so much, Jessica. So as Jessica mentioned, um, please use the Q&A feature uh, to throw your questions in. Feel free to throw the questions in live while, we're, while I'm talking, while I'm presenting. Um, that's going to be roughly the first 20 minutes of this presentation. We're hoping to kind of cover um, a lot of the, the main elements. And then anywhere like right around the 20 to 30 minute mark, we're going to transition over into a student panel. And we got a couple of folks with us today that we'd like um, for you all to kind of hear from and, and just kind of learn from their experiences. You can ask them questions live. We have some pre-prepared questions to just get the ball rolling, but um, we think their experiences are extremely valuable. Their experience is much more closer. All jokes aside, they are really your age. So their experience is gonna be much more valuable to helping you make um, a decision about UCSD, about the Jacobs School of Engineering, about the Summer Engineering Institute and the Idea Scholars Program. So without further ado, let's just talk a little bit about the structure at UCSD. So to kind of help you all understand when we kind of use certain names, we want to get a common understanding of, of vocabulary. So UCSD is the university. Uh, within UCSD is the Jacobs School of Engineering. And within the Jacobs School of Engineering is our department, the IDEA Engineering Student Center. So our department is putting on, we put on many, many student facing events, programs, um, workshops, we do a lot of outward facing um, um, programming, uh, but that we do it as a representative of the Jacobs School of Engineering. But just so everyone's clear, we're not the only folks within the Jacobs School of Engineering. You have academic advisors in each major department. You have folks that handle a lot of our fiscal activities. So that's payments and trying to process paperwork. We have um, faculty members. We have folks that work only with faculty members. So it's a fairly large um, department, very large institution. So within the IDEA Center, and IDEA again stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Excellence, and Achievement, we have several different programs. We've got um, an IDEA Scholars Program, Jacob Scholars Program. Within it, we also have the Engineering Learning Communities, which my colleague Jessica mentioned that she helps organize, she helps run that. Uh, our Summer Engineering Institute, we help support 49 plus, basically 50 engineering specific student organizations. And then we have just a, a several, uh, other programs and workshops and activities that we that we kind of help organize. So the Summer Engineering Institute, uh, let's just go ahead and jump into the Summer Engineering Institute. An overview of SEI, it, it's to get a jump start on your academic career, earn six credits on your engineering degree, receive support from instructors. So faculty, faculty are known, that's professors. Um, sometimes we have um, graduate students that might teach a course. Sometimes we have full on professors might teach the course, it depends on the course. Uh, we receive support or you will receive support from instructors, teaching assistants, staff, and peer facilitators. Peer facilitators are student staff, older student staff that's been hired and trained to help uh, support our incoming cohort. And really, SEI is to help start forming the peer network. So it's an opportunity for you all to get to know each other and get to meet each other. 
the courses, so we, uh, students take two courses during the Summer Engineering Institute, Engineering 15, two unit course, and then a four unit course in your major. So depending on what the major is, depending on what department you've been admitted to, that will correspond with the course that you take. For students who are mechanical or aerospace engineering, they take MAE8, uh, nano and chemical engineering, take a different course and so on. So we have a bunch of different um, enrichment activities, a, a lot of different programming events that'll happen for this summer. Tentatively, we are planning for the Summer Engineering Institute to be virtual. Last year, we did our event and we called it Summer Prep. That was a one week program that did not have uh, an academic or a course component to it. This year, we're expanding it to our traditional five week program. But again, we are planning it to be virtual. Um, but Along with the courses, we do plan a lot of academic and technical workshops to help you all, again, get a jump start, understand the career um, trajectory for engineers, build study skills, strategies. Um, we, host, we host seminars about research, about oh, just a bunch of different topics. Uh, and the idea is to get and um, help you all basically understand what to expect for the fall quarter. Uh, tentatively, from what I understand, we should hopefully would be back in person fall quarter. Um, so a lot of our programming, as you can imagine, is gonna be trying to help you all understand what the campus is gonna be like and how to um, excel academically, both virtually and in person. And with respect to the activities, if you all are wondering, well, how am I gonna build a community uh, in a virtual setting? This past year, again, we did our summer prep program, summer prep program, which was the one week program and I feel like we did an awesome job of bu building a sense of community, so much so that students made a video of themselves uh, for their suite or for their small kind of pods or groups or clusters uh, about their experience. And I kind of want to share one of these with you. So let's see if we're able to kind of do this and we're able to get some audio here. And give us a shout out if you like this video. Ruben, should there be audio? There most definitely should be audio. Is there no audio? Are you joking? There I think it'll also good. help if you tell, like the video is kind of lagging, but it helps when you tell everybody else to turn off their camera when you're showing a video, because then it takes away the lagging. Let's do it. Let's try this again. All right, let's take it from Maestro, from the top. I still don't hear it. Yeah, uh, when you, if you unshare screen, Ruben, and reshare, click a little box that says share computer sound. That might work. Yeah, it keeps doing that. Let's do that. Let's do that one more time. Let's see if I gotta save it. Oh, I gotta share. Uh -huh. I've done it two times now. Still didn't hit the share button. Let's do it. All right, last time, last time, last time. Okay, this time, this time for real, this time for real.
14 times a charm. Am I right? Am I right? All right. Let me get some love in the chat for that. So just so you know, that was uh, for some additional context. Students made the video. So students who participated in the program made a video at the very end of a one week program kind of just highlighting um, what they really appreciate about the program, their experience. They're just making a joke from one of their peer facilitators. So it's fantastic. Uh, a sample schedule for, from 2019, it's kind of been highlighted, but this is just to give you an idea that the summer program for um, the summer, it is extremely dense. So it is, there's courses, there are workshops, discussions for the different, um, for the different courses, there's community building activities. So it is a very busy, busy schedule, even though, um, again, we're planning for it to be virtual. Um, it is going to be a pretty busy schedule, just as a heads up. We also want to mention, in order to get the most out of uh, the program, we ask that you apply for summer financial aid and complete the 2021 FAFSA or California Dream Act. Uh, as opposed, and this is separate from the 2021-2022 FAFSA for the upcoming year, you have to do the FAFSA for the previous year in order to get um, some financial aid for the summer. So we definitely encourage you to complete that FAFSA um, and we recommend that you do it as soon as possible by May 10th at the latest, but as soon as possible so that we're able to package um, your financial aid packages and really give you notice about how much financial aid you may or may not receive for the summer. Additional information can be found again at the fao.ucsd.edu website. Um, I'm hoping Jessica, if you might be able to throw that link inside of the chat, that would be fantastic. And uh, uh, just a last note, the financial aid, we are hoping to get a um, video to kind of help support our students completing the FAFSA. So the video and some slides, like some PowerPoint slides or some Google slides, basically just like an information um, packet to be able to share with you all. We're hoping to get that pretty soon so we can share it with, with all the folks who attended today. So some important dates and important information to keep in mind. The application for the Summer Engineering Institute is currently open. Students are able to apply for the Summer Engineering Institute once they accept their offer to UCSD. So you must accept your offer to UCSD in order to apply for the Summer Engineering Institute. Admissions are on a rolling basis. Um, however, the application will likely have a hard close day uh, around May 10th or on May 10th. We recommend that you complete the summer uh, 2020, 2021 FAFSA by May 10th. Again, program dates for the Summer Engineering Institute are July 31st through September 4th, 2021. Um, Jessica might be able to throw in the link for the Summer Engineering Institute, again, inside the chat so that you all can go ahead and click on that if you're curious to get things started or you wanna just take a look at things right now. So thank you for that, Jessica. So again, if you have some questions, I want to take a moment here to remind you to use the Q&A, throw your questions in there. I know Jessica and um, Jenny Miranda, my supervisor, are doing the best they can to answer some of the questions inside of the Q&A. So please keep those questions going. And if anyone has a very specific question, Jessica or Jenny, if you see something, feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself and just let me know, bring it to my attention. We can um, take a little moment. But let's keep things going uh, with our presentation about the Idea Scholars Program. So the Idea Scholars Program is one of uh, a few scholars programs that the Idea Center runs and I, yours truly, um, coordinate the Idea Scholars Program. So the overview of this is the goal of the Jacob School's Idea Scholars Program is to foster community, um, community building and academic excellence among our top incoming engineering freshmen. Um, and as an idea scholar, students join a select group of students who will serve as ambassadors for the Jacobs School throughout their time at UCSD. And FYI, our four panelists today are also all um, idea scholars. And so in many ways, there's different ways to be able to serve as an ambassador. It might be volunteering, it might be being on a panel, it could be um, um, working with in some capacity uh, within the idea center, perhaps as a peer facilitator, as a peer educator. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways that students can end up being an ambassador. Uh, in each year, we select roughly 40 to 50 students um, as our cohort for incoming idea scholars. 
So the benefits of the IDEA Scholars Program is priority access to scholarships and internships, priority registration for the engineering learning communities, um, mentoring from fellow IDEA Scholars, that's our bigs and littles program, personalized support from IDEA Center staff, namely yours, I, I serve as the main advisor, but we do have other staff members uh, within the IDEA Center, uh, personal, professional, and leadership development opportunities, involvement in fostered engineering community, networking opportunities with engineering um, companies, and then an IDEA Scholar Medal upon graduation. The IDEA Scholar Medal uh, comes with our um, IDEA Scholar Ceremony, uh, and we're hoping that by your year, we'll be back in person so we can do that ceremony in person. And expectations for first year. So in students coming in their first year, it's slightly different than some of the folks who would, that are in their second and third and fourth year. So. In the fall quarter, we ask all um, admitted IDEA scholars to attend weekly discussions. And these weekly discussions are really just an opportunity for students to get a head start. We cover resumes, we cover getting an internship, we cover graduate school. We start to discuss just all of the questions that first years have about uh, the next four years and then some and what's gonna happen afterwards. Uh, IDEA scholars attend group discussions uh, and then there's also one-on-one -on -one advising sessions. Um, and the other requirement is we hope students meet with their big at least once per quarter. And we have some photos here, pre-COVID photos of Idea Scholar bigs meeting with their Idea Scholar littles. Um, so we have some folks grabbing boba, hanging out at Starbucks, just having an overall fun time. Some accomplishments from our Idea Scholars. This list is not an exhaustive list. This list is really just kind of like a snapshot. And Jessica, if you would throw the link for the Idea Scholars program or the Idea Scholars page, I should say, within our website, um, you can see a list of students from just within the past year where they've been admitted to for graduate school um, on our page. So if you look and click on the link for um, achievements, or it might be one of the first things that you see, you can see that Idea Scholars go on to graduate school. Uh, Ivy League institutions, West Coast, they really have been admitted to uh, any number of programs. And in addition, that doesn't even include um, summer research. Our Idea Scholars page only includes graduate school. So we did have students get into summer research at MIT. We have folks getting in a, um, a whole just range of institutions that aren't necessarily listed on that first page. So there are still additional schools um, that get added or are collected to our, our Idea Scholars list of achievements. Just a couple of, of items to note. So the Idea Scholars application closes on May 10th. So it closes with the SEI application. You must apply to SEI in order to apply to the Idea Scholars program. They are not separate. You must be, they are different, but they are not separate. You must apply to SEI and attend SEI in order to become an Idea Scholar. Uh, once you start the application for the Summer Engineering Institute, the application for the Idea Scholars program is embedded in there. It'll be at the end. If you don't wanna apply for the Idea Scholars program, no harm, no foul, we won't hold it against you. But in order to apply, you must apply to um, SEI. Uh, again, some of you may be asking, some of you may have been recruited or seen some correspondence from our colleagues within UCSD about the PATHS program or Summer Bridge. We're not affiliated with them directly. They're another department within UCSD, but that's a whole other um, campus department. So uh, any, any information with them, that's separate. We're, uh, and, and in relation to that, if any of you get accepted to some of the other scholars programs, so some of you might be a CASP scholar, Chancellor scholar, Regent scholar, that's, um, that, has, that does not affect the probability of you being accepted to the Idea Scholars program. They're independent of each other. So if you get accepted, feel free. Again, we're hoping that um, you, you apply to the Idea Scholars program and, and you know, don't be afraid about applying to the program. There's a couple of ways to be able to um, reach us. Again, we, got, we have a Facebook account, we have an Instagram account, and if you're not participating in the Engineering Overnight program, you can still follow us and follow our Instagram account and we are having a daily student takeover. So you can see students that are highlighting kind of what their life looks like right now on our Instagram account. Um, that's UCSD IDEA. The YouTube page, we have our website that's there. So that's definitely um, several opportunities for you to kind of interact with us and communicate with us. And let's go ahead and transition over to, actually let me pause here and see if there's anything um, with 
Um, Jessica and or Jenny, if there's any specific or pending questions that we need to um, answer perhaps live. Uh, Ruben, it's Jenny here. Sorry, it's, I have to put my video on. Here we go. Um, so there, there were a few questions. Um, I just wanted to clarify because they, they were quite common. Um, one is whether the program is going to be, it's going to have a residential component. Um, I just wanted to clarify, it's going to be a virtual program. So what that means is that you will not be leaving on campus. You will be taking classes. Um, and those classes will be offered virtually. Um, and all of the programming are also going to be um, virtual. So just wanted to clarify that. Um, another question is related to cost. Because you are taking classes, there will be costs involved, um, which is primarily your tuition and fees for the six units that you will be enrolling in. Um, Jessica, maybe we can drop the link for the SEI website as well, because um, those information is now on our website. Um, and there's a few questions about international students. So Ruben, maybe you can speak to that in a little bit uh, because I wasn't sure about you know the, the questions um, as it relates to international students. I'm, I'm guessing it's to do with the time difference, right? Um, for some of our students who um, may be on a different time zone. So we can definitely address that question. Um, and the last one I wanted to um, clarify is that Everyone who's admitted um, to engineering majors are um, eligible to apply to SDI, right? I, I say eligible because you have to accept your offer to come to UCSD before you can apply. So SDI is for all incoming freshmen who are in engineering majors. The idea of college program is an opt-in program, right? So when you apply for SDI, um, if you really want to be also part of the idea scholars program, at that point in time, you can elect to also be a, uh, to also apply for the idea scholars program. Um, but they are two separate applications. So I just wanted to clarify that you don't have to be an idea scholar to be part of SEI, but you do have to to let us know if you want to be considered to be an idea scholar. Yeah, thank you very much. So. Um... Just to kind of clarify uh, a couple of things about both the schedule, about the Idea Scholars program, and about the kind of international, the question about having a time difference or time zone difference. So with respect to the schedule that is with two courses, that's with the six units over the summer. Six units in the summer is, is full time. That's a very fast pace, just FYI. It's different than being full time during the fall quarter. Um, and what does that mean with respect to the fall quarter? During the summer, it's five weeks. During the fall quarter, it's 10 weeks. So professors, faculty basically have to condense the same amount of information that you would get in 10 weeks into five weeks. So that's just kind of to give you an idea about what that means. It's very, it's a, it's a, a lot of information to really try to convey in um, five weeks. Uh, with respect to international students, we definitely have international students and we had them during our summer prep program last summer. Um, we are cognizant of the time differential, but that is for our summer, um, our social activities, the, the activities that we have greater control over. With respect to the classes, typically the classes are offered somewhere in the range between um, like 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. to about 4 p.m. Pacific uh, Standard Time. So that's something to keep, be cognizant of. Are they recorded? Are they not recorded? It's dependent upon the professor. It's dependent upon the individual course. So I wouldn't be able to tell you yes or no. It varies and it fluctuates. Um, it really would depend on the instructor and how they intend to teach the course. Um, how much do you have to pay for the program? That's a fantastic question. Jenny mentioned that the information is live uh, and available on our Summer Engineering uh, Institute webpage. So check that out. The cost of SEI, of the Summer Engineering Institute, the primary cost is the cost of attending UCSD or of taking courses. So if you look at the number, that number is gonna be roughly, I wanna say it's like around 2,000, 200, 2,300, somewhere in that range. Um, look at the website, get the finalized number. What that cost covers is the cost of tuition for summer courses. So if you're wondering where that number goes to, it's to cover the cost of courses. Um, and so, you know, that's a couple of, um, uh, hopefully answered a couple of questions. I did see a question here about paths, summer bridge and um, SEI, they're run by different departments. That's the best way to explain it. There are different programs. Um, the Idea Scholars program is a cohort. It's a four year cohort program. 
So if you're admitted, like Jenny mentioned, it's an opt-in. You must apply. You must try to opt into the program. You must be accepted into the Idea Scholars program. If you're accepted, it's a four-year program. There is a scholarship that's awarded with uh, being accepted as an Idea Scholar, but it's a one-time scholarship. It's not a renewable scholarship. Um, it is a four-year program, and that is different than the other two. Um, Summer Bridge is a summer program. The Summer Engineering Institute is a summer program specifically designed for engineering students. And then PATHS is a whole separate program. You'd have to go to their website to get more information. Uh, at this point, I want to go ahead and transition over to our um, students, though. I want to go ahead and, and um, start some of our, our Q&A session for our students. So at this moment, I'd like to go ahead and have some of our students introduce themselves. Um, let's go ahead and start with Andres. Andres, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andres. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm a third year mechanical engineering major from Six College. Uh, yeah, Six College. There's two colleges that don't have a name. It's six and seven. It used to not be seven. But anyway, it's, I'm from Six College. And my hometown is from, is like uh, the Palm Springs area, more specific, specifically Indio and La Quinta. So if you know that. I saw someone was from Palm Springs. Sorry, I, I need to mention that. Giving them, that's giving people shout outs. I love it. There you go. That's on the, the homie there coming from the hometown. So thank you very much. Um, and then uh, Macy, go ahead and introduce yourself. Macy. Hello, guys. Uh, my name is Macy. I'm a third year chemical engineering student at ERC. Um, and I'm from like Temecula, if anybody knows where that is. I just say Temecula. It's more inland, but yeah. Thank you very much, Macy. Uh, Temecula, you know, shout out from Francisco. Yeah, a couple of folks seem to know Temecula. Let's go ahead and Michelle, please introduce her. Hello, my name is Michelle. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a chemical engineering student. I'm a third year, also from Sixth College. And I am from Anaheim, Orange County area. From the Anaheim, Orange County area, we I know that there's some Orange County folks inside uh, watching today, so definitely um, should be giving some shout outs to um, Michelle. And Nikita, please. Hi, I'm Nikita. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a first year bioengineering bioinformatics major in Warren College, and I'm from the Bay Area, like more specifically Cupertino. Cupertino. So just so you know, if you bought an iPhone, Nikita is the one that is changing it. So if that, the setting is automatically Cupertino, we can thank Nikita for that. I'm just kidding. It's not, it's not real. But uh, what is super important to know about Nikita is that Nikita was one of our participants in the summer prep program. Uh, as Nikita mentioned, she's a first year and her experience has been completely virtual with respect to UCSD. So uh, I think some of our insights are going to be really um, helpful for those of you who are still deciding or trying to kind of uh, understand more about what to expect. So I want to go ahead and open up with the first question. And this question, we're going to send it out to everyone, to all of our, all of our panelists. Why did you apply to the Summer Engineering Institute or the Summer Prep Program, depending on which, which version you attended? And let's go in the same order. Let's start with Andres. Andres, why did you apply? and attend Summer Engineering Institute? Uh, yeah, so there were a, a few reasons why I wanted to, to apply. Um, one of them was because uh, I'm not sure who, what, uh, or who else was in this position, but um, I wasn't really too familiar with engineering in general. I knew that I wanted to study engineering and I knew that I wanted to go into mechanical engineering, but I didn't really know what, that, what it meant I was gonna be learning, what I was gonna be doing after. Uh, nobody in my family had pursued engineering before, so it became, it was kind of difficult for me to grasp what I was going to be doing. And I thought that uh, this program would be a great way for me to uh, get a better idea of what I'd be doing um, um, throughout the four years at UCSD and maybe even after UCSD. And also, it'd be a good way for me to expose myself to other people who are studying engineering as well. Uh, yeah, so I have a tendency to be a little bit shy. So I think it'd be good for me to meet other engineering majors. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Macy? Um, so I don't know. I kind of just threw myself into engineering. So then like this like email came across me and I kind of just thought like college was 
I was like, okay, I got to take every opportunity that comes my way. Right. So I was like, this going to be cool. Like I can meet people. I've never visited. I had never visited UCSD before the program. So I was like, I could be able to live on campus. Like I just thought it was a really cool opportunity and that's the main reason I applied. And then when I got it, I got super excited. So, yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, Michelle. Yeah, I guess thinking back on it, I'm surprised that I applied just because I'm also a shy person and thinking about going to a program on a college campus for five weeks and I don't know anyone, I was terrified of that, but I was like, hey, I have nothing to lose. Like, I also wanted to dip my toe in the water, I guess, just living on campus and getting used to it um, and just meeting new people as well. So yeah, overall, I'm really glad I did apply, but yeah, that's why. Thank you for that, Nikita. I knew I was going to be attending college virtually for fall, so I wanted to have some way to get to know other engineers, especially not like through classes, because I was really nervous for my first quarter. And that's why I was like, I'll apply for summer prep. And it was a really good decision. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you all really for kind of giving, sharing your insight about why. It's always great to kind of go back. I, I do get the opportunity to meet students when they first come in. And it's just really helpful and insightful to understand where they were emotionally, mentally uh, as they transitioned in. So it's a great, great, um, great insight. Uh, I wanna go ahead and ask a couple of folks. This question is gonna be directed at Michelle and then Macy. So what has been the most beneficial part or what was the most beneficial part of the Summer Engineering Institute? And let me start with Michelle. Michelle, what was the most beneficial part of the Summer Engineering Institute in your opinion? I think this answer is pretty easy for me is meeting like my closest friends there. Macy, you are one of them. Um, yeah, I do, just met so many amazing people and also in my same major, which is cool. Um, of course, I met a ton of other engineering majors, but it was cool creating a group of chemical engineers that we could take classes with and we help each other out all the time and they've just become my friends who I hang out with on a daily basis. Like aside from academics, they're also just, um, yeah, the people that I love to be around. So I guess the most beneficial part is meeting new people and also coming into college, knowing a lot more familiar faces too. Uh, yeah. That's a great response. Let's hear, let's hear what Macy has to say. I was I'm literally gonna say the same thing like I got there and instantly like bonds everywhere like you get to college and your your relationships get so much stronger than the relationships you make in high school and I couldn't believe it like I knew my freshman year I knew every like at least three like one to three people in every single one of my classes my whole freshman year because of this program and it was just so nice because you could you could just message anybody on Facebook that you knew from the program. And you're like, oh my God, you want to study in the library together? Like, and it was just, I think meeting everybody and then like actually living on campus and having to walk to our classes and stuff like really helped because then like freshman year you're not like lost the whole time trying to find all your classes. Um, it was really cool. It was just like, a, it was kind of like a little taste of like what the next four years of my life was going to be like. And I was so thankful to meet the people that I did. It's a very, very um, wonderful insight. Thank you so much, Macy. I'm gonna pause here and I wanna remind folks, if you have general questions about SEI or the Idea Scholars program as a whole, use the Q&A feature and that way Jessica or Jenny can type out a response. And if you have questions for our panelists, use the chat feature. Go ahead and throw your questions for the panelists in the chat. I'm checking the chat and we can see if we can um, get a couple of questions thrown out or a couple of, um, viewer submitted questions uh, sent over to our panelists. And so uh, with that being said, again, Q&A for general questions or kind of big picture questions, chat for panelists directed questions. But at this moment, so we heard from Michelle and Macy and they mentioned their experiences and meeting friends. Uh, their experience was in person. Uh, for Nikita, I'm curious about your experience because your experience was virtual. So for Nikita, what was it like participating in a virtual program in summer prep? 
And do you feel like you were able to connect with um, other engineering students? Yeah, I feel like my answer is the exact same, even though mine was virtual. I met some of my closest friends and also future roommate through summer prep. And like I've had study sessions this week with a bunch of them for some of my classes. And it's just been absolutely great because I think summer prep helped make the whole virtual situation easier since I knew people going in. So fall quarter was much easier and I just met a ton of really, really great people. Thanks, that's a fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Nikita. Um, by the way, just in case you're wondering, I, I should have prefaced this as we started the Q&A. I have no idea what students are gonna respond with. I have not prepared their answers whatsoever. They're not getting paid for their answers. I have not written their answers, um, none of that. I have sent some of them questions in advance. So they have an idea of like what questions could be asked but I have not um, coached them with their responses whatsoever. So uh, Nikita's response definitely makes me, makes me feel a whole lot better in that we were able to build a sense of community. So that's fantastic. So we have a couple of questions in the chat. I'm gonna take one question from the chat. Then I wanna go back to some of our pre-prepared questions. So um, Jessica threw one in there. How did you get over your first year anxiety? So this is coming from the Q&A uh, for engineering majors. How did you get over your first year anxieties? And I wanna go ahead and send this one over to um, Andres and Nikita. How did you get over your first year anxieties? And I want um, to get the difference when Andres participated in person, Nikita is virtual. So let's start off with Andres. Andres, how did you get over, if you had any anxieties really, how did you get over them uh, during your first year? Um, yeah, so I, I'm normally not a very anxious person, uh, but um, I think, uh, this question really ties into like something called imposter syndrome. I know a lot of people maybe you haven't heard of that, but it basically means like you feel like you're not supposed to be there. Like and 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 when I was admitted to UCSD, it was my first time like really being surrounded about around other people who are very similar to me. And like I'm not sure who else felt this way, but in high school you kind of feel like you're breezing by, and, and UCSD is definitely not like that. You definitely have to uh, sort of change your habits a little bit, but. Um, for me, it, it was kind of like a getting like a wake up call, you know, the first time, like the first week or whatever, when I was in SCI in person, I'm surrounded by all these people who are like very intelligent, know a lot about what they're doing and, and things like that. And it, it kind of told me, you know, like, you know, I can't be doing the same thing that I'm going to be doing in high school. Like I, and I need to take advantage of this opportunity around uh, in that I'm around so many smart people, you know, I don't want to be like shy or whatever. I want to be willing to ask questions whenever I can. I think that's the main thing. Like, just don't be afraid to ask questions. Like, especially amongst your friends, like, they're not going to say anything. They're like, what? You don't know that? They're just going to answer your questions. So I think, like, just ask as many questions as, as you can whenever you get the chance. Thanks, Andres. Nikita, same question to you. I think for me, the biggest thing I was anxious about was just the idea of being lost and having no idea what to do because engineering did seem really scary at first. But I think coming in as a first year, I realized a lot of other first years are in the same position and everyone is confused a lot. So they're there to help you out and they're here to like support you. And I think that's what really helped me this year is knowing that if I needed help with something, there are people willing to go out of their way to help us out. And there's also so many resources that we can use. So that's actually made it a lot easier and helped me become less anxious about. Thank you for that. I'm gonna take a moment to answer a couple of questions really quickly. I'm getting some couple of common questions and then I wanna send it back to some of our panelists. So um, if I'm taking six units, how will that affect um, if, are there any repercussions if I fail courses? Yes, these are courses for grade. These are letter grades, these are summer courses. Are there repercussions? Most definitely. If you take a course for a letter grade, does it affect your GPA? Most definitely it affects your GPA. It absolutely affects your GPA. The Summer Engineering Institute, if you take courses through the Summer Engineering Institute, these are UCSD courses and they absolutely affect um, your, GP, your overall transcript and GPA. This is, even though it's a summer prep transition program, these are courses taken for letter grade. You're starting your year, your academic year, one quarter before everybody else. So you're not starting with everyone else in the fall, you start in the summer and then you continue through the fall, everybody else starts in the fall. Um, if there, are there stereotypes, uh, are stereotypes true that engineers have no social life? That's absolutely a stereotype that is 100% false. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that one out there. 
And then there was a question about how do you know which um, course to take for credit? You do not have an option. It's based on your major. So if you're a structural engineering major, you end up taking the course that's for structural engineers. If you're within the mechanical engineering aerospace, uh, mechanical aerospace engineering major, excuse me, MAE, then you take MAE 8. So it, it, it corresponds with your admitted major. So you, again, you don't, you don't get a choice. Um, there was a good question in here about, um, did you always know um, immediately what type of engineering you wanted to do? So this is a question uh, someone sent in. And so I wanna throw this out to some of our panelists uh, I, I've had one-on-one -on -one conversations with all of our panelists as the idea scholars, advisor, and coordinator. So I know pretty much kind of where many students are feeling and their thoughts. I want to throw this question out to um, to Michelle and Macy. Michelle, why don't you why don't you go ahead and respond first? Did you always know um, what type of engineering you wanted to do, or do in general? Uh, I guess yes and no. Like in the middle. Um, of course, you have to pick a major you want to apply to when you're applying to college. So, and there's really only so much research you can do, right? So I, I picked chemical engineering because I liked chemistry in high school. Um, that was the main reason, I guess you could say. I don't also don't know that many engineers that I could talk to. So I was kind of going into it blindly, you know, um, but I had high hopes. I was optimistic. But anyways, um, I guess I'm still obviously trying to figure out what a chemical engineer does. Uh, <laughs> I might sound bad, but like also I'm like kind of kidding. Like I, yeah, I'm still figuring out what I want to do. I, I really do enjoy chemical engineering. Um, but yeah. I get, I hope that that answered the question. So I guess I kind of knew that I wanted to do chemical engineering, but still learning it on the way. Like, I don't, yeah, <laughs> I guess I hope that answered it. Let's hear from Macy. Macy, what do you, what would you like to add to that? Um, so <laughs> okay. I think the first time I really wanted to do engineering was like, when I was in calculus in high school, just because I fell in love with calculus, because my teacher was like the best teacher I've ever had. Um, so I was like, you know, what? I need to work with numbers like the rest of my life. So I think it'd be really cool. And I think engineering would be really cool. And the thing that I really got into looking at was petroleum engineers, and like working with oil and a lot of the environmental side of things. And um, there's a lot of pathways you can use through chemical engineering to get there. So that's kind of just like, I also just thought chemical engineering sounded really cool because like you always hear about electrical and like structural and mechanical engineering and I just didn't I didn't really have a huge grasp on what chemical engineering was so I picked it and it's definitely different from what I like kind of expected it to be but I mean I'm in my third year and I still don't want to switch my major so I think I picked right. <laughs> That's awesome thank you so much. Um, Macy, thank you for both Michelle and Macy. And we have a couple other really good questions in here. So there's one in here about how cutthroat are engineering courses. And how does UCSD courses compare to other UCs competition and academic wise? Let's just focus on the first part. So the second part, how does UCSD courses compare to other UCs competition and academic wise? I'll kind of answer that question because our students are students at UCSD. So they're not taking courses at Berkeley, Irvine, et cetera. They're taking courses at UCSD and for the most part only at UCSD unless they're taking a summer course somewhere else. But how cutthroat are the courses compared to other institutions? Let me just tell you right now, calculus is calculus. Calculus doesn't change if you're in a community college. Calculus doesn't change if you're taking it at Caltech or MIT or UCSD. Calculus is calculus. So if you're wondering if it's any different, I don't know how else to explain it to you other than calculus is calculus. It stays the same. The rules, physics is physics. The rules of physics don't change because you got into Stanford. And if you're going to UCSD, it doesn't change. Physics is physics. But with respect to how, co how cutthroat, excuse me, our engineering courses or um, you know some of the classmates, I wanna give this question to Andres and Nikita and kind of get their ideas about how cutthroat some of the courses are. So Andres and Nikita are both peer educators. So they help lead some of our um, engineering learning communities. 
So they do a really good job of being able to support and Akita is one of our newest members. She's just joining us. Andres has been doing it for a while. Let's start off with Andres. Andres, you've seen a lot of students, you know, probably in your time as being a peer educator. What are your thoughts about how cutthroat are engineering courses? Um, so, so engineering courses, I, I feel like a lot of people get get like freaked out, especially other majors. When you, you tell them, "Oh, I'm an engineering major," like, "Oh, whoa, 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 it must be a lot of work." But I, it's it's really not that bad. If you're admitted at UCSD and Jacob School of Engineering, you're you're smart. You're definitely smart. You know what you're doing. You're an intelligent person. You're not gonna die, and you're definitely gonna have a social life, like Ruben said. Um, it's not as as a big deal as everyone makes it out to be. Um, uh, as long as you put effort in, uh, uh, you you try to manage your time well. I know that's a big thing, but yeah, you, that you'll learn how to do that as you as you get better or as you continue with college. Uh, they're they're not as scary as they seem. Um, as long as you put effort in and you go to lecture and you uh, study a little bit or study a lot. Sorry, my bad. Study a lot, then you'll be fine. And just to just to kind of add to Andres's comment right now. The amount that you study doesn't always correspond with the grade you get. Sometimes you got to study a whole lot. Sometimes you may not need to put in the same amount of effort. It really depends on the course and it depends on you, depends on your learning style. So uh, I guess in, in Andres's case, it's a, a subtle flex. Study a little, you know, just kidding, Andres. Puts in, he puts in that OT, so he's definitely studying. Um, Nikita, what are your thoughts? As a student this past year, uh, do you think some of the courses are cutthroat? Do you think your classmates are cutthroat? What are your thoughts on that question? Um, honestly, I don't, I haven't taken a ton of engineering, engineering specific courses, but I have done ones for engineering and literally in all of them, I don't think they're cutthroat at all because I think again, as Andres just said, these classes are hard. They're not easy, but at the same time, it's hard for everyone. So because of that, it's a very collaborative environment. And I think no matter what, area I've been in trying to learn it's everyone's willing to teach you or help you out and I think that's made it actually much easier than it would be otherwise but like out of my personal experience so far this entire year I have definitely not seen it being cutthroat. Thank you for that. Along the lines about um, courses do you, some of you feel that um, studying for college is the same as studying in high school? Is there a difference? And when did you realize the difference? I want to throw that question out to Andres and to Macy. Andres, do you feel like studying for college um, is the same as studying for high school? Yeah, I'd say definitely, definitely different. Um, like I said, going back to high school, uh, studying for my chemistry test basically meant like watching a 10 minute YouTube video the night before as I was going to bed. Uh, but it's not like that in college. Uh, you're going to have to review the lecture notes. Um, I, I don't know. I would just watch a crash course video before, but it's not like that in college. So so you, you're you going to have to study for review your lecture notes. Um, what I think is very useful is, is the practice problems, because that's what you're going to be doing in the in the exam. So just try to do as much practice problems as you can. But don't oh, kill yourself. Like, you can only do so much practice problems until you're, like, good at it, okay? You're not going to get better by doing 100 versus 50, okay? Um, the YouTube video shout out, that was fantastic. What a, what a, what a change in time from when I was in high school to what it's like now when everybody has access to like all bits of information immediately at their fingertips. Um, Macy, what say you? Do you feel like studying in college is the same as in high school? The YouTube thing really killed me because <laughs> that's so true. Like high school was like, yeah, I got straight A's and I graduated with a great GPA, but like I didn't do that much work. Like if I'm being completely honest with myself and like I would make Quizlets, like <laughs> Quizlet was my friend and I would just go through that a little bit. Um, but no, yeah, it's definitely different when you get to college. I think the main difference is like self-discipline and like knowing that you have to do that thing. Because like, yeah, your professors are like, oh, we have a quiz next week. And like they'll say that in every lecture the week before, but they're not on your phone every five minutes saying, hey, study. Hey, you got to study. Hey, remember, there's a quiz. Like, so you kind of just have to make sure you're planning your time right and knowing like when everything is due, putting it in your calendar is really nice, putting every due date you have. Um, and I think also just like what Andrea said, like when you're studying for a test, you don't want to burn yourself out either. So like you can study a little bit earlier and then like right before the test I always give myself at least like 30 minutes to an hour right before the test to just be brain dead and just like sit there and relax because you want to go into your tests with no anxiety and no stress so 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, uh, Macy. Quizlets, you got a little shout out from Omar for the Quizlet. So your, your, your response is resonating with a few folks. Um, I recognize the time, it's 5.57 over here in San Diego. So I just wanna go ahead and give one last question to our panelists. So for our um, panelists, if you could talk to yourself in your senior year of high school, what would you say? What, what advice would you give? I love Nikita's reaction. I just saw her, she was like, oh, she, oh she, she, who was I senior year of high school? But if you could talk to yourself senior year of high school, what would you say to yourself? What advice would you give to yourself? And, and for that, let's go ahead and start with Nikita. Nikita. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing is don't try to figure out your entire life as an 18 year old, because I think I was trying my senior year to figure out every moment of my future. And like as my first year, I realized there's so much for me to learn and so much I don't know. And there's no way I could have figured it all out last year. So I should have just not stressed about that and had fun instead of figuring out my entire life. Thank you, Nikita. Macy? Same thing. Like, like in high school, you're like, everybody's telling you repeatedly, like, oh, you gotta get to college. You gotta get into a good college. You gotta do this, you gotta do that, straight A's, da, da, da. I was in three sports in high school. I was a busy person all the time, every day, like, but I liked it. I pushed myself so hard, but it was, what kept me going. And like, if I were to go back and talk to myself, I'd be like, okay, calm down. <laughs> I'd be like, you're gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. There's like, you don't have to do everything at once. Like life is so long and like, we have all this time for ourselves. And I think one of the main things I would tell myself is just to step back and look at everything I'm doing and like see where everything is going to take me, see where like who, what the people I'm hanging out with and where they're going to take me in my life and how I'm growing in that moment and like make decisions based off of that. Thank you for that, Macy. Michelle, what would you say? Okay, hearing this advice, I'm like, I need to take this too, for, even for myself as a third year. Um, but I think just enjoy every moment of your senior year. Like you have a few months left and just enjoy every second. Um, like uh, Macy and Nikita said, like don't stress too much about the future, you know, go into college with an open mind and be excited. And yeah, you have the next four years to like explore anything you want. Um, but also like if anyone's watched the movie soul, you should watch it. I know it's very popular, but again, like I said before, like just remember the little things and appreciate the little things and yeah, don't constantly think too much about the future. You know, you got me moving with the, with the soul, that, that movie, oh, sheesh, that's a tearjerker. That's one of my faves straight up. And the soundtrack is great too. Yeah. Soul is the is what a great movie and what a great reference for that. Thank you for that, Michelle. Uh, Andres. Um, uh, so yeah, like, like I, I just want to emphasize this uh, again, is like just, uh, or to high school myself, I'd say like continue to ask questions. Like uh, you, you don't know how much asking questions has helped me out throughout the past three years. Cause yeah, a, a grade is a grade on a transcript, right? And you get an A or you get a B or whatever grade you get. But, but something that not everyone is exposed to is your experiences and your experiences are very unique to you. So what you can obtain from your own experiences and, and ask as many questions as you can is gonna stick with you, not on just the transcript, it's gonna stick with you for, for a long time, you know? And that's that's information that that is valuable because it's information that only you have, okay? And you're gonna use that information for your benefit. Um, and another thing I wanna mention is, is, is everyone has different goals in college. You know, in, in high school, everybody has very similar goals in that they're trying to get G high GPA, high SAT, high whatever, to get the best college, right? But in college, it's a lot different. Everybody has different goals on what they want to do after college. So don't model your goals about what you think this, the status norm is or what everybody else is doing. Model your goals about, around what you want to do, okay? Whether that be uh, in work in industry after or go to graduate school or, or do whatever you want to do. Uh, you you got to have your own goals and, and make a path for yourself, not model your path around everyone else. So, so if you're a little bit different than anyone else, don't get panicked. Just keep going. You know, you know what you're doing. Uh, Andres, I can see why Jessica hired you as a peer educator. Uh, and I, I, if you had given that advice to yourself in your senior year, 
you know, that we would have been able to get to work a lot sooner. So I'm very grateful for that advice. And also, I think Andres is trying to take my job from me as a, pro as a program coordinator within the Idea Center. So snaps and shout out to Andres for taking us home with that. Um, at this moment, so we're at 602. We're a little bit over time. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to all of you for coming out and listening and, and um, um, asking questions and being engaged. I see the chats going. I see the Q&A still has some questions that we're trying to get to it. I want to give a big thanks to our panelists, to Andres, Nikita, Macy, Michelle. Um, I want to give a shout out to Jenny and Jessica for helping put the event together. For those of you who are part of the engineering overnight program, we're going to have our social activity at 630, just a reminder. Uh, and then we have our, our final activity at 8 p.m. today. So for those of you in EOP, again, you have that in a separate email. You should be able to have those links. Uh, for those of you that are watching streaming or that are watching um, via the webinar, thank you again for spending time with us. Thank you to all the folks from the Bay Area, from Orange County, from Temecula, from Riverside, Los Angeles, Santa Monica, and the folks who are just down the street over in Chula Vista, down uh, over here in North Park, Mission Valley, La Jolla. Um, big shout out to all the folks. Uh, and I wanna make sure I end on the note with once again, congratulations on being accepted to the University of California, San Diego. It is a big, big achievement. You should be extremely proud of yourselves. You and your loved ones should be extremely happy and proud of yourselves. I know it may be a difficult decision ultimately to decide what institution you wanna go to. That's for you to make a decision for you and maybe with your loved ones, with your parents, with your guardians to make that decision. But at minimum, at least enjoy the moment, congratulate yourself and appreciate and celebrate your achievements. With that being said, thank you all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and stop recording and we're gonna end the webinar. Thank you all very much.